All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the TR Schools TV Game of the Week presented by the TRA. I'm Casey Kenerkowski. We're about ready to start the second half between the Neptune Scarlet Flyers and the hometown Tomsworth South Indians. It's Neptune leading 33 to 13 coming out of the halftime break. They will get the football as well. Uh, looking back at the first half stats, Neptune really gashing Tomsworth South's defense to the tune of 303 total yards, including 187 on uh, the passing side of the ball, 116 on the ground. Most of that coming from number nine, Willie Gross. He had four touch or four uh, receptions, 141 passing uh, reception yards, three touchdowns on that side, and also a 74-yard reverse for a touchdown. So four total touchdowns by number nine, 70% of the offense coming from him as the squib kick will yield a recovery there by number 34, Leaks on Neptune, and they will start at their own 35-yard line. Neptune scoring on all but one of their offensive possessions in the first half. Probably the key play of the half was just before halftime, the last scoring drive for Neptune. They had a fourth down and 25 from the 38-yard line, and they decided to leave the offense out there on the field pay dividends with a 38-yard touchdown strike between number 17, Nino Bua, the quarterback, and Willie Gross. So that kind of, if one play characterizes Times of South's evening, that is probably it. First down at 10, 35-yard line. Houghton, the running back around the right side of the line, he'll gain two on first down. Houghton's had a pretty good night. Eight rushing attempts in the first half, 52 yards and a touchdown. Good for an average of about six and a half yards per touch. Speaking of Boo, he was seven of eight in that first half, 187 yards, three touchdowns all going to Gross. Uh, so definitely a lot of offensive productivity for Neptune. Now something that they are accustomed to. Last couple of years have had a little bit of a struggle, but this year not so much as Leaks buried in the backfield there by Tom's River South, finally standing up there on the defensive side of the ball. Ferrigno coming in there. Also had number one, Devin Porsche. In on the stop, that'll be a loss of two. And we'll see if Times River South's defense can get Neptune off the field here with a three and out to start the third quarter. Neptune going to bring in a big blocking back. Ray Sun Banks, number 13, checking in. Boo in the shotgun, back to throw, looks to his left, tries to throw, he uncorks, it comes back right, this time he's got a little separation, and Gross drops the ball, and then an interception is dropped by Toms of her south, a dual opportunity there, for catches, Tobin number nine on the Indians, had an opportunity to catch the deflection for an interception, he couldn't hang on though. Nonetheless, it'll be Tom Zuer South with a key three and out forced to start this third quarter. So exactly what Coach Signorino wanted coming out of the halftime break. Get Neptune's high-powered, high-velocity offense off the field. And let's see if Tom Zuer South can answer with some points quick. That one bobble, low snap, and they're going to track him down to the 20-yard line. Must be something on that side of the field as we saw Times River South have struggles with that in the first half, and now Neptune having struggles with a snap and holding on to the ball as Porsche number one for the Indians came in, bottled up the punter, and just like that, Times River South already in the red zone, the ball at the 20-yard line for their first possession here of the second half. So all that kind of energy that was there for Neptune to end the first half, they ended up scoring 26 points in the second quarter to really extend that lead. Now Times River South testing that momentum as they'll start first and 10, their opponent's 20-yard line going to an I formation here. Fakes the handoff to Squire, looking back, throwing deep. This one on a post route, and that's complete for a touchdown, Times River South. How about that one? Another connection to number eight, 
Rob Morrow, a 20-yard touchdown strike. Morrow had two touchdown receptions in the first half, make that a third here. The second time they've struck on a quick one-play drive. And just like that, Times River South back in this one. How about that one coming out of the timeout? Just what the doctor ordered for Times River South. That penalty, not so much, but will not take away from the defense doing what it needed to do with a three and out, and then the offense coming up with a great touchdown pass on a play-action play, 20 yards out. Exactly what Coach Signorino wanted to see coming out of the halftime break for his ball club is Stein will try to get it up here. Another extended extra point, and this one is good at the 10-15 mark. So South strikes first here in the second half. They cut that halftime deficit that was 33 to 13, now down to 33 to 20. With a touchdown pass yet again, third connection between Huber and Marrow. Huber was pretty efficient in that first half. He was 8 of 12, 99 yards, had the two touchdowns, a one interception, which he forced that one into traffic. Morrow, his go-to target, now make it five receptions on the game, 72 yards and three touchdowns. And while we have a moment, we're going to update you on that score over at Dvorak Field. Uh, homecoming weekend over there at Times River East. The Raiders have added two touchdowns in the second half there to go up 28 to eight with about 430 remaining in the third quarter. So it looks like Times River East is on its way to yet another victory. Trying to stay undefeated, trying to get to seven and0 on the season and set up what could be a monumental game next week here on TR Schools TV between the two crosstown rivals, Toms River East and Toms River North. The Mariners, uh, for those of you who are wondering why there's no score updates on them, they play tomorrow afternoon against Long Branch. This so one short kick fielded by the upback Harris at the 40-yard line. And so Toms River South trying to, I guess, forego the old conclusion about field position trying to get an opportunity maybe for a misjudgment on a bounce or, or some sort of bobble there by Neptune's hands team to try to steal a possession. They may need to steal a possession in this one with the way Neptune is going up and down the field scoring. But not on the last drive as Times River South finally found some way to get Neptune off the field. I'll we'll see if they can duplicate that here on this one. A little different look here from Neptune, they're going to go with two backs in the backfield. Send one guy in motion, handoff now to Leeks around the left side. He's got a crease. He's stopped there by Ravis, number 20. But that'll be close to the first down. They'll mark him about a yard short. The spot. And so Leeks with the carry. He had a few carries in the first half. Adds one there, swing pass, faked, going out left now, and bottled up by Toms of her south. However, the ball rolls forward there. Guy rolls in there, and Boo, not giving up on that one, ends up fighting his way to get the first down. Looked like they had him about a yard or two short of the line to gain, but that last second surge there by Boo creates a Scarlet Flyers first down. Key difference really in that first half was that Neptune, their offensive efficiency, averaging almost nine yards per play, times over south just five. That really making the difference in the first half. Let's see what they could do here. Swing pass out in front of them. That one was dropped by number five, Rakey Nebad. So that's incomplete. So a fortunate break there by Toms River South. He did have some green in front of him. 
Some good blocking. Obviously, that screen game kind of newer the last decade or so to all levels of football, whether you're talking about high school, college, or professional. And really what that comes down to is you need your receivers downfield to kind of pin off the blocking as we'll get, looks like an illegal substitution penalty against Neptune. Looks like too many guys on the field at one time when they broke the huddle. So now that'll knock them back five yards, help out the Indians' cause. Looks like the two receivers are lined up against each other as it'll be Gross guarded by Morrow. You're on the short side of your screen. Handoff, Houghton dragged down immediately from the backfield. That time number 76 from Times River South. Sheldon Harvey coming in to make the stop. Bring him down right at the line of scrimmage. Bring up a third down and 15 with 8.40 remaining here in the third quarter. Times River South stopped. Neptune on their first drive then went and scored in one play. They're trying to get him off the field here. And Neptune looks a little discombobulated here on this drive as they'll take their first time out of the second half. To give us a little bit of time to update you on some scores that are going on uh, throughout the Shore Conference. A lot of these are halftime scores uh, between some of those top teams at the Shore. That number, or excuse me, that top 10 matchup between Red Bank Catholic and Manalip, and that was at the half, a 14-10 advantage RBC. Still a 3-0 score between Rumson and Middletown South. Number one, Wall hosting St. John Vianney. They're up 14-7 at the half. And Donovan Catholic well in control of their game against Lacey, up 28 to nothing late in the third quarter. Uh, so all those games, trying to talk about division titles being decided. Only three weeks remain here in the 2019 regular season of the Shore Conference football schedule. Teams fighting for championship crowns, teams fighting to get into the playoffs. You'll see a whole mix of them here on TR Schools TV these next couple weeks. Coming out of the timeout, third down and 15. Have to get to the 38-yard line for a first down. Rush handled well, going deep. This one undercut and almost intercepted, trying to get to Gross yet again. But a nice play in the defensive secondary by the Indians to knock the ball down. And it will result in another punt. So two punts here for Neptune here in the second half. As South trying to put together a little comeback here. I'd love to keep this trend going, especially on the defensive side of the ball. As punt, oh, almost blocked, very close to being blocked. Fielded cleanly there by number two, Tyler Matteo. And around the 20 yard line, they'll mark them back at the 19. And that is where Times River South will start their second possession here of the second half. So the South offense again that first half had a little bit of trouble moving the football at times. 29 plays, 136 yards. Had the turnover with the interception by Huber. Had a couple of special teams errors. Special teams has really been one of the areas that has been given trouble. Had a missed extra point and a botched punt on the snap. A couple of bobbles when it came to kickoffs. But right now all that can be forgiven if they're able to drive down the field an inch a little closer down by 13, ball at their own 19-yard line. So I trap play, counter play to Squire. That one read well by the Neptune defense. Results in maybe a small loss. About a yard. Trying to get that stretch play working. Uh, so far tonight, Neptune has really hung tight there. Uh, trying to press... 
the Indians into some uncomfortable situations. Big number 76, Demir Brown for the Scarlet Flyers. Six foot three, 280 pounds, anchoring the middle of that line, making it very difficult for any kind of internal push. Handoff on the inside to Ferrigno, and he'll get close to the 25 yard line. As he'll pick up six on second down. Flag on the play, we'll see what it is here. It's like offsetting penalties on both teams. And we saw in the first half the officials had to speak to two of the players, one from each team, uh, regarding some extracurricular activities. We saw Gross get a penalty called on him for an excessive celebration. Which later helped Times River South get excellent field position and score a touchdown. So offsetting penalties. Ball will go back to the 18-yard line. They'll reset it second down and 11. Two wide receivers split to the short side of your screen. Back to throw, crosser, and that one just short, could not convert it to Tyler Matteo. As that one goes incomplete. Bring up a third down and 11 for the Indians. And with all the momentum going their way so far halfway through this third quarter, be nice for them to convert it here keep the drive alive and keep the hopes alive that they can come back in this one. Down by 13, they need 11 yards here on third down. Huber under center again. Fakes it, rolling out to his left. He's got pressure in his face. He dumps it out in a traffic. Caught though by number two, Tyler Matteo across the 30 yard line and that will do the Business of moving the sticks, a 13 yard pickup, and a first down. Looked like a dangerous pass. Had a lot of pressure in his face. Number 27, Sadiq Armstead, was coming around from the outside linebacker spot. But Huber, again, going to that left side, seems to be more comfortable going that way. Drops a dime in there. And Moves the sticks for this Indians offense. First and 10, 32 yard line. Back to throw, Huber. Pumps, pocket collapses. He'll make his way back to the line of scrimmage. But an ugly penalty flag falling in the middle of that line. And I think anybody who's a fan of football knows what that usually means. And the official just confirms it. The holding against Times over South. Backs them up 10 yards. I really can't blame, though, the South offensive line for holding, though. The pocket was collapsing. A lot of those pass rushers were about ready to get in and take out Huber. A really quick glance downfield had nothing down there. So a 10-yard penalty backs him up, makes it first down and 20. Back at the 18-yard line. Handoff inside there. Bottled up quickly. That was to Ferrigno. No gain. Tackle by number one, Junior Houghton, who came in from the inside linebacker position. They'll give him a two yard gain on first down. Go back to that I formation look. Well, they ran the touchdown out of last possession. It's going to be a handoff around the right, or left side, excuse me, to Squire across the 30. And he's dragged down close to the original line of scrimmage. So they'll give him 10 yards on that one. Good play call, but it still leaves them with a third down and 12. And you get to the 42 yard line to move the sticks. 35, Josh Arabodi in the 
game as well. Got two wide receivers split to the top side, one to the short side. Back to throw, looking to his left first. He's going to throw it up for Matteo. Matteo cannot get it to go. Had to rob it from the defensive player there, Gross, who was in front of him. As we've got an injured player, looks like an injured Indian back down near the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, looks like an injured Neptune player, rather. As the medical staff will attend to him. Both teams taking a knee. End of the third quarter, times were east up 28 to eight. As we see a player get up on that one, good to see that happen. That's big number 99, Amir Booz. Five foot 11, 245 pound sophomore for the Scarlet Flyers. Really an anchor on the inside of that defensive line. So he gets up, starting to walk off with a little bit of assistance. Also an update on that top 10 matchup, number seven in Alpa now surging ahead of number five, Red Bank Catholic, 17 to 14 at home. So that one living up to the billing as advertised. We saw the Braves earlier this season on TR Schools TV against High School North and what was a shootout, a 42-40 victory for the Mariners. Really tough division. Those guys to play in a punt. Almost blocked, it goes low. Squibbler gets across the 40-yard line. Nobody picks it up. That'll end up being about a 33-yard punt by Toms of her south from Stein. Fortunate it was not blocked as that one came out low. There were a lot of guys coming right at the punter. Be a first and 10 Neptune with... About 4.44 remaining here in the third quarter as the teams exchange punts their last two possessions. Not much going on, but you know, going back to that Shore Conference American division that Times of North finds itself atop of right now. Just really high quality, high caliber talent from all those teams. And North with a chance to clinch at least a share tomorrow if they are able to beat Long Branch. They're currently tied with Rumson Ferry event as we've got a stretch play around the outside to Carter that'll yield a two yard gain. Jerry Ferrigno again coming in with the tackle, the junior. And Ferrigno, you know, it's on the defensive side of the ball, but you know, he had two kickoff returns for touchdowns last week in that shootout up in Matawan. Got to give the guy credit. He's playing on all sides of the ball as a slot back, as a linebacker, and also playing on special teams. High snap, corralled by Bua, and Houghton makes something out of almost nothing. So he surges ahead. Oda Bode gets a body on him and knocks him down, but not after he picks up five yards. And will make it now a third down and manageable for the Scarlet Flyers' offensive attack. Critical play here for Times River South. They're trying to keep the momentum. They can get Neptune off the field here. Go a long way towards doing that. Handoff inside. Houghton stood up at the line of scrimmage. Stood up at just beyond the 45-yard line. Whole gang of Indians there, including number 99, Isaiah McElrath. No gain. A fourth down and two near midfield. And Coach Holman, no hesitation. He's going for it. Fourth and two. Bua checks with the sidelines. He's got Houghton in the backfield with him. Be a timeout. Charge to Neptune. Their second one of the half. They will think it over. Critical juncture here with just under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. A 13-point lead for the Scarlet Flyers. They're facing now a fourth down 
and two at their own 45-yard line. Opportunity for Toms over South to not only stop them, get excellent field position. Be really critical for them there. They were able to do this. You know, last week, Toms over South uh, defensively had some trouble, especially in the fourth quarter. They gave up 21 points in the fourth quarter. Another seven in overtime. And this time it looks like the punting unit will come out. You always have to watch for a fake in this kind of situation, though. It's back deep is Matteo, number two. That punt gets away cleanly, high, angling towards the left side, not returnable. Have to see where it goes out. They're going to mark it at the 30-yard line, so that'll be a punt of 25 yards. And so South gaining some field position after that last drive. They start on their own 30-yard line. They're down by two scores. But their defense so far coming to play in the second half, resulting in three punts by the Scarlet Flyers. Let's see if the South offense can match something and try to cut this deficit in half. They've got the talent to be able to do it. They've got some good guys on the offensive line who can move some bodies. They're going to need that here tonight. I formation. Huber under center. Keeper going left, option, pitches it out. This one on the run, Squire across the 40-yard line, jukes a little bit across midfield, down near the 45-yard line. Again, a 25 on first down. Little spark in the step there from Travis Squire. Finally got in the clear and gets a first down and more. Indians going quickly here. No huddle. Go fast, back to throw. Huber looking left, quick hitch route to Matteo. Out across the 40 yard line, gain of six on first down. Appears as though Toms over South, they wanna go very quickly, not allowing the Neptune defense to substitute. Rigmo the A back. Back to throw, looking left again. He uncorks it. This one going down towards the sideline. That one's intercepted. Intercepted by number five, Rakim Nabad. That's his second interception here tonight. That one forced in the traffic by Huber as we've got another Neptune Scarlet Flyer down on the turf. Is everybody going quiet here on both sidelines? As the medical staff comes over to try to attend to that injury. Trying to roll him over. Looks like they have him rolled back over on his back. So he was laying face down to begin. So while we have a moment here with this injury, that last play, again, Huber, the one knock on him is that he tries to force the ball into tight spots. Paid off with some of the touchdowns he's thrown tonight, but he's also thrown two interceptions. Both almost mirror images of each other. Where his receiver was double covered, tried to force it in there against the boundary. And an interception by Neptune to stave off what was an offensive attack by Toms over South. Here at the 2.18 mark here in the third quarter. As the medical staff still attends to the injured Neptune player. Another update on a score as we get the player up and ready to go. At that time, number one, William Harris.
captain on the defense. That Scarlet Flyers team, the linebacker, is the injured party. He's walking off, looks like under his own powers. That's a positive sign. In terms of a scoring update, Ocean Township, who at this point in the season is 5-0, ranked number eight in the Shore Conference. They are leading Point Borough 14-7 at the end of the third quarter. End of three quarters in that Manalapan RBC game, still 17-14 Braves. No further updates from that Toms of Reese game. As Manal Manalapan uh, doing pretty well, East doing pretty well, and so far Neptune doing pretty well here as they get the ball back and a five yard gain by Houghton. Second down at five, Bua looking to his left. He's gonna throw to his left, wide open receiver. Jukes back under and then brought down by the defense. Squire with the tackle, but a flag down there as well. Pass play out to number eight, Khalil Garrett Dogan. Personal foul face mask against Tom Zuer's out, so bad gets worse for the Indians defense. They'll add 15 yards to that catch in a first down. It'll be a first and 10 for the Scarlet Flyers at the Indians' 39-yard line. Hand off right side. Houghton through the middle of the defense. Across the 25-yard line, down near the 20. That'll be a 17-yard pickup. See, Gash is the interior of that line. Kind of getting a feeling right now that Neptune likes what they're seeing. They're going to try to ram the ball down the throat of the Indians here on this possession. Hand off right side yet again. This time stopped along the right side. Looked like Porsche was the first one there, number one. Drags him down after a gain of two. Now inside of a minute and rolling here in the third quarter. 13 point lead for the Scarlet Flyers and they're on the move here. Ball at the Times River South 20 yard line. Second down and eight. Hand off right side again to Houghton. Inside the 15 down to the 14. Be a six yard gain. We'll see if Neptune chooses to snap the ball before the end of the half, or in the end of the quarter rather. And they will not. So the third quarter will end with Neptune on the move in the red zone, leading 33 to 20 over Tom's River South. So South, the only touchdown in that third quarter coming from the Indians. Oh, it was a touchdown strike. Again, the third connection between Jack Huber and Rob Morrow. Defense for South played pretty well, but right now they've got themselves on their heels, needing to give up only a field goal opportunity to have a chance to stay in this one. Cannot afford this late in the game to allow a three-score deficit to occur. That's exactly what Times River South is facing. So marching backwards, they've managed to slow down the high-powered Scarlet Flyers offense, but slowing down and winning are two very, very different things. Update on that Times River East game as we enter the fourth quarter here. There's four minutes left in that game, and the Raiders lead 35 to 16. So they will improve to 7 and 0, and set up a great matchup next week against Tom's River North.
Stack formation here on the short side of the field between the two receivers. Gross and Garrett Dogan. As Bua looking for signals from the sidelines, rechecks. Snaps the ball, handoff Houghton up the middle. He gains one or two, stopped first by number 59, Aaron Height. All depends upon the spot. The official's going to take a measurement here. It was a third down and three. They will bring the chain unit out. Try to measure this one. They have just enough to get the first down. So Houghton's last stretch, last push forward makes the difference. That'll move the chains. Set up with a first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. They have Gross lined up in the slot. Leaks at the running back position. Fake it to him. Pressure coming into his face. They're going for the fade. Did he get it? No, incomplete. A little too long. A little bit too long for him. Could not hang on to it. They tried to get it out there to Gross on the fade. Pass falls incomplete. Looked like he dropped it as he was going out of bounds. There was a little bit of pressure in Bua's face. That had to have altered the trajectory of that one. Looked like it sailed a little bit on him. Hand off inside, leaks around the left side. And dragged to the ground. Ferrigno there to wrap him up after a short gain of about one. One yard gain, third down, we'll call it eight. They have to get to the two yard line before they would move the chain, so they can get a first down without getting the ball in the end zone. South just trying to get these guys off the field. Two wide receivers split to the top side of your screen. Shotgun formation, Bua checking his play sheet. Adjusting the running back, Houghton to his left. The delay a game against Neptune. It'll be a five yard penalty, makes it a little bit more difficult to convert this one. Now if you're south, you've been able to get some pressure against Bua on this drive, but the fear with that is that if you put pressure on the quarterback, you're leaving single coverage throughout the field. And with guys like Gross and guys like Garrett Dogan out there, that could be a lethal combination. But Gross out here split wide from the quarterback. Bring him in motion and... Another delay a game penalty, back to back delay a game penalties against Neptune. And all of a sudden the Scarlet Flyers are looking more like the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, uh, moving the ball back in the wrong direction. Never know about Rutgers, oh they have a new coach. Miracles do happen. So we're looking left, this screenplay out Diagnosed well, though, by Times of her South is it'll be a minimal gain for Carter up to about the 16-yard line. So a four-yard pass play conversion on the screen. Bring up a fourth down and 14. And they're going to try to kick this one. Be a 33 yard field goal attempt. Left 
kick up by Jack Smith. And it is good. So a 33-yard field goal is true by Neptune. And just like that, they extend their lead up to 36 to 20. So a 33-yard field goal by Jack Smith. Extends the lead, but the good news for Thames River South is that by giving up just a field goal, it remains just a two-possession game with just over 10 minutes remaining here from Detweiler Stadium. Speaking of field goals, Manalapan with a field goal to extend their lead to six, 20 to 14 with 220 left against RBC. A 21-14 game in favor of Ocean Township over Point Borough. And Wall leading 34 to seven in their matchup against St. John Vianney, they've scored 20 straight points there, so good job by them. A bobbled hands team yet again by Tom's over South. Seems like almost every single one of those, and you hate to beat up on them, but it really does seem like every single one of those, there's some sort of miscue, some sort of issue. Sometimes it's not even a, a coaching thing, sometimes it's not even the player's fault. It's just almost like the yips in golf. Where you just have that kind of situation where you start to bobble things and then everything starts to unravel from there. Tom's over South is in need of a quick strike. They've scored two quick touchdowns in this game. They're gonna need another one here. They will try to find something, some magic. Try to keep their playoff hopes alive. Hand off inside Squire who bounces to the outside. Gets a little bit of room, gets up towards the 25 yard line before he's thrown down by number 26, Saman Armstead. Picks up a gain of seven. As Matteo number two jogs off gingerly. He'll get looked at by the training staff. Coming in number 80, Gavin Magliori. As we get a counterplay again to Squire, he's got some lead blockers in front across the 30 yard line, across the 35 yard line. Dragged down at the 36, gain of 11. So two great positive offensive rushing plays for Toms over South here. Coming up on nine minutes remaining in the game, down by 16. Go back to the I formation. Hand off right side. This one not so easy for Squire as the backside defender came in and got him. That's Armstead, Sadiq Armstead, number 27. Came around, wrapped him up for no game. Second down and 10. It's one trip, then makes something out of nothing there as he almost tripped coming out of the snap. Manages to sh shuffle his feet forward for a gain of six. Quick snap here by Toms of South. Hand off counterplay, Squire tripped up, breaks out of it, 45 yard line. He's in the clear, he's got an opportunity, dragging a defender with him inside the 20. Loses the ball outside of the field of play. As that's a big gain, deep in the Neptune territory. They'll mark him down at the 21 yard line.
First and 10 times over South, 21. Yard line of Neptune. We were getting the signals out to his troops. Bodie in motion, handoff, counterplay inside. Squire again pushes his way to the 16 yard line. Gain of five on first down. Trying to use as little time between plays as they can, knowing they have to conserve some clock. Fakes it, hands off to Squire. This time, Neptune in the backfield very quickly, including number 21, Junior Houghton. Short gain there for Squire, and I'll bring up a third down, and we'll call it a long four. Timeout, Times of Earth South. It's their first of this second half. They will consider what their options are. A third down and four with 6.50 remaining. Playing here at home. Down by 16. Have to get a touchdown and get a successful two-point conversion to have any chance in this one. Final score in that Manalapan Red Bank Catholic game. It's Manalapan 20, Red Bank Catholic 14. So Manalapan, a team that lost earlier this season to Toms River North, ends up getting a win against a team that Toms River North lost to a few weeks back, RBC. So RBC out of contention when it comes to at least sharing the American Division title. Manalapan keeping their hopes alive as they will be three and two in divisional play. They'll have to rely on Toms River North and Rumson Fairhaven both losing to share that title. Back to the action here coming out of the timeout. Third down and four Indians. Have to get to the 11 yard line to move the sticks. Fakes it, same play with Squire. A Averts a Verge disaster there and gets really close. I believe they'll give him the spot. They should give him the 11-yard line. It's one of those plays, looks like it was a slow developing kind of play. Might have gotten caught up in the back side of it, but patience by Squire, good blocking upfield by Toms over South. And they get just enough to move the chains. Inside of seven minutes remaining. They stop the clock as he goes out of bounds. First and 10, 11 yard line. Fakes it, trying to go deep on the screen. This one forced in the back of the end zone. He was just trying to get to Matteo again. But again, not double coverage this time, but triple coverage. Dangerous throw. Falls incomplete. As really, really didn't have very much of an option there. They tried to fake the screen and get Neptune's defenders to bite up on it to try to lob the ball over the top. Really sound defensive play. Good techniques there by Neptune to stay aggressive but not too aggressive. Results in incomplete pass, now a second and 10. Option going left side, keeper by Huber and a shoestring tackle. Shoestring tackle there by the defense. Bring up a third down and six. Eleventh play of this drive. Six minutes remaining. Going right side, this option pitch, double pass, and a touchdown. Double pass, touchdown for Rigmo to the corner. 
to number eight yet again, Rob Morrow. So a little trick play there from Toms River South. They did one of those last week against Matawan and it worked. They try it again. And they get the eight yard touchdown pass to go. Makes it a 36-26 deficit. They will go for two to try to get this to a one score game. Huber looking right into the end zone. Two point conversion good by High School South. So they needed to get eight on that drive and they do get eight. Quick screen, very New England Patriots-esque. You see that all the time with Tom Brady throwing it out to Julian Edelman, fighting his way into the end zone. Same thing going on there between Huber and Morrow as Morrow fights his way through to get the two-point conversion to go. And with just under six minutes remaining, the TP smoking, the band playing loud, the cheerleaders involved, the crowd involved. Everybody on their feet here at Detweiler Stadium as Toms River South, a team that was once down by 20, is now within eight with just under six minutes remaining in this one. An 11-play drive that started at their own 17-yard line. They marched down the field, mostly running plays. In fact, nine out of those 11 plays were on the ground, but the last one, the one that they scored on, the trick play from Ferrigmo to Matteo, was a touchdown pass. Then they passed the ball on the two-point conversion, and they get it to go. Let's see what Coach Signorino wants to do on this special teams play. They've been kicking it short, trying to get a carom off of an up back. Kind of a modified squib slash onside kick. See what the foot of Cameron Sign decides to do. They will kick it deep this time. It is fielded at the 24 yard line by Gross. Gross across the 25, cuts back to the 30, sandwiched by a whole gang of Indians mixed with a flag thrown near one of the blocking backs was. And it will be against Neptune, so that will push them back. Victory bell ringing. Fans at High School South, I'm sure, are wishing for that to be ringing loudly and proudly at the end of the game. They're gonna have to do some more, though, on the defensive side of the ball first and then get the ball back to the offense in order for this crowd to erupt and for Toms River South to walk away with a victory. You almost have to feel like if Toms River South's defense has a turnover in them, this would be the time to do it. We'll get a personal foul called against Neptune. We'll push them all the way back. They're going to mark it back at the seven yard line. So here's the situation, folks. An eight point lead for Neptune. 542 remaining. Times of her south with two timeouts. Neptune with one timeout. The junior, Nino Bua, starter last year, had his starting job taken away earlier in the season. They tried a sophomore out and then they've gone back to him. Ball is in his hands. So he keeps it, throws it quick out to Gross. That was a second away from being a complete disaster. Turns out to be a 10 yard pickup and a first down. As Boo had pressure in his face on that one, just couldn't get home a second later, would have been deflected or possibly worse. Fortunate to make it out there. 
an illegal substitution again against Neptune. That's the third penalty of its kind that's gone against Neptune in this game. Had a little trouble with that. They had a couple of delay of game penalties on the last drive. Cannot give Toms River South any life here. Else they could make you pay for it. Shotgun handoff. Houghton around the right side. He's got room. He's across to the 25 yard line. Near the 26. A nice run there by the junior. As he gets it to go up to the 26 yard line. 14 yard gain. We have second down and we'll call it one. Hand off left side, drag down. Whole bunch of them there, including number 99, Isaiah McElrath, who was there. Be a loss on the play. They'll give him a loss of two, could have been more. Definitely could have been more on that one. Mark him back at the 24 yard line. Four minutes in rolling. Biggest play of the game so far right now, a third down and three. Bua calling signals, takes it back to throw, looking to his right, throws right, quick pass to Gross. Check that, that'll be eight on that side. Garrett Dogan with a quick pitch and catch and a first down. Ten yard gain. Moves the chains. More importantly, keeps the clock rolling and the ball in the hands of the Scarlet Flyers. Fakes the handoff. Running for his life. Running to the right side. Finds a little bit of room. Scrambles. Stays in bounds. They're going to give him the full yardage up to the 44. That may be enough to move the sticks, and it will be. So a scramble play there by Bua results in a first down. We haven't seen him do that much this evening, but effective right there. And he gets the first down. Clock stops with 3.31 remaining. Fresh set of downs for the Scarlet Flyers. As they try to get back to 500 on the season, keep their playoff hopes alive. Handoff inside Houghton up near midfield. They're gonna mark him back at the 48 yard line. A timeout by Coach Signorino here. He'll have one remaining after this one. Four yard run by Houghton. Keeps things going. Looks like some of the scores wall in complete control of that game. The number one team at the shore. Looks like they're going to stay that way. They're up 41 to 14 over St. John Vianney. So they will improve to 7 and 0. Raiders and the Piners. Lakewood still playing. Lakewood scored with 3.04 remaining. The two point conversion was no good. Scoring that one 35 to 22. Times over East. Second down at six. Leaks with the carry. So he gets across midfield to the 47 yard line. Timeout, Times over South. Now they can't stop the clock any longer. In this one. Five yard gain there by Leeks. They'll bring up a third down and a long one. With 317 remaining in this one. 
An opportunity for both teams coming into the night. Trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. Neptune knocking on the door of evening their record to three and three on the season. Times River South, unless they can get the ball back here by stopping Neptune on his third down and short, it appears as though they're gonna lose another heartbreaker. Opening night, it was a five point defeat to Times River East on the road. They lost by seven in overtime last week. They've lost a lot of close games over the last couple of years. Trying to avoid losing another one here. All up to the two teams on the field now. No more coaching. Now let's go out and win the game for your team. Hand off inside. He's stuffed. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Needed a yard, did not get it. Times over South's defense holds like a stone wall. No gain. Brings up a fourth down and one. The clock will continue to run because Tom's over south out of timeouts. Decision time for Neptune. They will huddle. Go with Houghton in the backfield. Before the ball is snapped, a timeout called by Neptune. Now both teams are out of timeouts. 2.25 remaining. A 36-28 barn burner of a game. We'll come down to the final 2.25. South scored the first touchdown. Neptune answered back. Neptune ended up scoring 26 points in the second quarter. They had a 20-point halftime lead. Times River South came out at a defensive stop in the third quarter, put up another quick touchdown. They've cut it to two possessions for a while, got the ball back on their last offensive possession, went down the field, scored a touchdown, got the two-point conversion. They've put themselves in a position to possibly be able to win this game. They're gonna need their defense to make one more stop here to give their offense one more chance at trying to go down and tie the game. Fourth down and one, play of the game right here, folks. Under center, Bua surges ahead. All depends upon the spot. All depends upon the spot here, folks. They will have an official measurement right here. He needed to get to about the 45 and a half yard line. That looks about where the ball has been placed down. Crowd silent, anxious, worried. Biggest measurement of the evening right here. First down virtually ends the game. And that's a first down for the Scarlet Flyers. Crowd that has come down the parkway from Neptune. Reacts and cheers while simultaneously we get boos and a negative reaction from the Times River South crowd. Understandable, football a game of emotions. Clock will roll, 2.15 remaining. Fresh set of downs. As Neptune Really just has to hold on to the football here and they will walk out of Detweiler Stadium with a victory. A huge road win. Taking all the time off the play clock. Hand off, Houghton, right side. He loses three but stays in bounds. Clock rolls. 140 remaining. Very patient. <laughs> the 
Looking back at the back judge. As soon as he puts his hand up to signal the amount of time that is left on the play clock. Hand off Houghton, left side. Open hole, cuts back across the 30. Dragged down near the 20 yard line. That might be the backbreaker there. That's a 28 yard gain for the junior Houghton. Clock will roll, they'll have to snap it one more time. Be a victory formation for Neptune. Scarlet Flyers coach Tarek Holman, who in his first season three years ago went 0-10. Proud program at Neptune that had gone to the state semifinals, state finals many years. Were champions back in 2011. In an 11-1 season, Central Jersey Group 3 champs. They have not been to the playoffs since 2014. They're back to 500 with this victory on the road. 3-3, three and three. playoff hope still alive. On the other sideline, Times River South falling to 1-4 and four with this defeat. 0-4 oh in the Shore Conference's Freedom Division. They will play Jackson Liberty here next week to try to get back to their winning ways, but their playoff hopes all but ended with a loss here tonight. Hard fought game by both teams. Both teams definitely have a lot to be proud of, but only one winner in this game. And tonight it's the visitors as the Scarlet Flyers come into Detweiler Stadium and pull off a win 36 to 28 over the hometown Times River South Indians. Just too much offensive firepower in that first half for Times River South to overcome. They gave up 33 points in that first half, just three in the second half. But it was enough to pad the lead, to cushion it for Neptune, and they were able to walk out of here with a victory. Playoff hopes alive. Both these teams out of the divisional race. As we can now confirm here on TR Schools TV, I don't know if anybody would have believed this, had we said this even in the preseason, but Tom's are raced with a win over Lakewood, 35 to 22, on this night, the 18th of October. The Tom's are Reese Raiders, coached by Coach Kyle Sandberg, are Freedom Division champions. They finish with a perfect 6-0 mark there. They are now 7-0 on the season. And we'll set up a big game next week. We'll have it here on TR Schools TV between Times River East and Times River North over at Gurnard Field on the north side of town. Huge victory for Coach Sandberg. Congratulations to him, his entire coaching staff, entire program over there on a really phenomenal story. Great comeback season. A lot of articles written about them. Uh, and we'll get to cover them next week uh, in what should be an instant classic here on TR Schools TV. Another score update before we wrap this one up. Uh, an upset of sorts in the American division between Middletown South and Rumson Fairhaven. Rumson Fairhaven, the number two team at the shore, goes down at home. They lose to the Eagles of Middletown South 20-3 in a game that Rumson Fairhaven was leading 3-0 at the half. 20 straight unanswered points by Middletown South to get back in the win column and to kind of maybe keep their playoff hopes alive. As we get one more score in, again, recap, uh, the Red Bank Catholic and Manalapan game, Manalapan with a win. So two top five teams go down in the Shore Conference, and Neptune wins here tonight against Toms of River South. For Neptune and their team, they're going to go play next week at the Cougars of Colts Neck for Times River South. They will play host to Jackson Liberty here as they try to get their second win of the season. Again, your final score here on TR Schools TV from Detweiler Stadium. It's Neptune 36, Times River South 28 for our producer Chip Phillips and our entire crew here at TR Schools TV. I'm Casey Kenderkowski saying good night for now on TR Schools TV.